Duke football starts the 2024 season with a win. What a way to kick off the Manny Diaz era leading the Duke football program. A lot to discuss here today on Locked On Blue Devils. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us on Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024. Hope that everyone had a long and enjoyable Labor Day weekend. Really great to see college football back in our lives and to see the Duke Blue Devils take the football field once again at Wallace Wade Stadium. They defeat Elon by a score of 26 to 3. Jordan Mann is here with us today. His return to talk about this win for Duke football what's next for the squad, and so much more. If you have not done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to Lockdown Blue Devils for free, wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Make sure that you leave us a five-star rating and written review. Your support means so much to us over at Lockdown Blue Devils, and those written reviews on the Apple Podcast platform certainly help the algorithms out. Watch our show daily on YouTube as well. Like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's one of the best and easiest ways to support what we got going on over here. You can follow us on X at LO underscore Blue Devils, and I'm there as well at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. So without further ado, very excited to bring him on into the show. Here is our pal Jordan Mann back with us once again. And brother, you were there in attendance over the weekend for the first Duke football game of the season. Just so good that we don't have to speculate what the team's going to look like anymore. We know for a fact we got to see them play a game. Yeah, it was awesome to be back in Wallace Wade, JJ. Uh, great atmosphere. Like, I look, had about 20,000 people there out of 32, and with a lot of rain that happened in the, earlier in the day, monsoon for about a couple hours, and then play FCS Elon. Look, it, that's kind of the numbers we were expecting, but the Devil's deck looked really nice. Uh, the big white deck, the biggest white deck I've ever seen, JJ. So... <laughs> I uh, really liked it a lot, and look, vibes are high. Want to know going into week two. Yeah, that's what you want. You'd rather be in this position than not. And so for the Stuke football team, they pick up the win 26-3 to uh, over Elon. Debut of Manny Diaz as the head coach. Uh, I think immediately you sort of saw the things that he was preaching throughout the offseason. A really tough defense, a team uh, that, that toughness is kind of one of those words that he loves to have within his program, a team that was so well-conditioned, didn't feel like they were getting gassed really on either side of the ball, and there were a couple of moments in the second half where an Elon squad was doing all they could to buy for extra timeouts and breathers with how uh, Duke was able to go up and down the field against them. Yeah, I mean, look, Duke's, uh, I think, first five dropbacks Elon had were, were three sacks, so Duke made their presence felt early, and what you really love to see, Duke had eight sacks, it seemed like seven different guys were a part of the eight sacks. So the love was spread around all the defense. And you love to see that. 16 tackles for a loss. Uh, yeah, Manny Diaz came in. It's like, hey, we're going to be aggressive. He hired Jonathan Patkey. They were toe-and-toe, neck-and-neck last season with uh, tackles for a loss, one at Texas State, one at Penn State. And it seemed like they were having a competition on the sideline with each other. It's like, hey, you want to bet this guy gets tackled for a loss this play? What about this guy? And Duke was very active, and it was very fun to watch. Yeah, let's get those numbers again. Eight sacks for the Blue Devils, second most ever in a football game. The most was nine back in 2019 when Duke played Miami when Manny Diaz was the head coach of the Hurricanes. So now we've got him on our side of things and pick up eight sacks. And then 16 tackles for loss. That's the most since 2007 in a football game. It's insane. Uh, the Stoop defense practically lived in the backfield against Elon. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a great pull, JJ. I had no idea that nine was the all-time record. It was against Manny Diaz in 2019. Uh, kind of shocks me the TFLs were 20, 2007. because you Long know you way think, back. Well, you think about that era of Duke football, it's not great football. Right. So <laughs> who are they playing? I need to I need to watch that film. But um, that was that's awesome. But, yeah, look. Defense side of the ball, lights out. Uh, Vince, Vincent Anthony Jr., Wes Williams, all those guys up front. I'm very excited to see how they do in Chicago this weekend. Yeah, against Northwestern, that's going to be a big squad. Still going to talk a little bit more about the offense uh, and what we saw out of the debut from Malik Murphy. But 
want to give a couple of more thoughts on the defense because I think all in all you walk away from an opener where you only give up three points, and it's at the very end of the game, less than 60 seconds remaining when Elon's able to line one up and uh, get that field goal on the board. A, a really dominant performance start to finish. They wasted no time. Uh, it looked like they were in different defensive sets and fronts throughout the course of the game, able to disguise a whole lot of things, and that's what you want to see uh, early and often throughout the season. Yeah, I think one guy that I want to shout out, I'd, uh, Connor and I talked about him a little bit on the Big J and Little J show, is Cam Bergeron. Cam Bergeron has kind of been like a role player type of guy the last year or two under Elko's system. He blossomed and stood out uh, against Elon, had a couple, a few TFLs and racked up some tackles. And look, if Duke can have guys like him step up to a bigger role and make him a household name on the Duke defense, then that's just even better for what I think is a good team or good defense overall. You're adding guys like Cam Bergeron making impact plays. I think uh, sky's the limit for Duke's defense. I really do. Yeah, I love seeing him around. We talked a lot about Trey Freeman over the course of the offseason, and it's somebody like Trey Ber or Cam Bergeron, excuse me, uh, that was making big-time plays for the Blue Devils. Again, taking a look at some of the numbers on the defensive side of the football. In I mean, this Elon team just did not have – many yards of offense throughout the course of the game. 60 yards of their offense came in the final drive when Duke had already kind of put some of their backups into the game. You have all those negative plays. Obviously, that's really going to hurt your total yard total. But, man, that was uh, that was pretty impressive what the whole defense was able to do. Yeah, I told Connor last night during our recording, I said, if Duke's offense, for whatever reason, only had three points the whole game, I would have never thought Duke was on upset alert because I just knew for a fact Elon could not cross midfield with Duke's ones on. I mean, they crossed them one time. They kicked a field goal, and it hit off the upright and bounced back into play, the crossbar. Um, besides that, yeah, Elon could not get to midfield. So Duke's defense was really on one Friday night. Yeah, 140 total yards for Elon against the Blue Devils. Uh, Cam Bergeron did lead the way with eight tackles, two and a half tackles for loss. Number four on the defense for the Blue Devils. You'll see the number four jersey flying around throughout the course of the season. And then through the air, uh, the two quarterbacks combined for Elon went 16 of 24 for 110 yards. No picks, no touchdowns. They averaged 4.6 yards per completion. So I thought the secondary, uh, let's be, they really weren't tested too much, Jordan. Uh, but when they were, did a really nice job kind of limiting it to just short pass attempts and keeping it in front. Yeah, I think the one play Duke was tested on was the very first play of the game. Elon went play action and threw a deep ball against the blitz, and Duke's pressure got to the QB enough to where it was a little to the right of the wide receiver, and it was uncatchable. And besides that ball, I agree with you. The secondary wasn't really tested at all because the QB was fighting for his life. I thought for sure they'd start rotating QBs after, like, the third series – I could not imagine being behind that offensive line and seeing ghosts like Sam Darnold famously yeah. on the sidelines. <laughs> He's fighting for his life, that's for sure. All right, well, let's talk about the Duke quarterback. That's Malik Murphy. He debuts as the Blue Devils gunslinger, and we'll talk about his performance after our first time out on today's show. Lockdown Blue Devils here today is brought to you by Ultimate College Football HC. i got to take a moment to tell you about this brand new mobile game. In this amazing game and simulation, you get to step into the shoes of a head coach and lead your college football program to glory. Can you imagine actually being the head coach of the Duke Blue Devils? You've got that opportunity in this game. From recruiting players and hiring coaching staffs to overseeing training camps and handing skull scholarships, you control every crucial detail of the program. It's all in your hands. Ultimate College Football HC is completely free, it has no ads, and is 100% playable offline. You can play on the go as you want and when you want. And, of course, we've got a special offer for Locked On Blue Devils fans. Use the promo code Locked On at CFB, all capital letters, inside the game store to receive a free boost to your program. Make sure you take advantage of this perk as it will get your team off to a strong start. Download the game and, again, visit ultimate dash cfb.com ultimate dash cfb.com or look it up on the app store ultimate college football hc begin your coaching legacy today a proud sponsor 
of Locked On Blue Devils. Welcome back in to Locked On Blue Devils. I'm JJ Jackson alongside Jordan Mann from the Big J and Little J Show. You mentioned already uh, talking about this win over Elon. You've got a full season preview out there. Tell us a little bit about the Big J and Little J Show, Jordan. Yeah, we wrapped up our uh, Elon uh, thoughts and then preview of Northwestern and last night. It, the podcast will be out today, uh, later today, once I edit it. Um, yeah, look, I we talk, we deep dive with what we saw offensively, defensively, talk about Malik Murphy, who we're about to talk about, and the defense side of the ball and see where we can go uh, going into Northwestern. Dukes won five in a row against Northwestern, so see if we can make it six. Let's do it. I'd love that to happen. All right, so talking about Malik Murphy, he is the new quarterback for the Blue Devils. Uh, he finishes the day victorious. Uh, what did you think of his debut? So I rewatched the game. Uh, I think AC Network came out with something on YouTube for the full game. So yep. I wanted to watch his reps because in person it's always tougher to see, to dissect. You always want to watch it on film. But he threw the ball 41 times. I think it was 25 or 26 of 41. And I would probably say three of those balls, I was like, ah, they're scary ones. But that's like 5% of his passes, which is perfectly fine. I think there was a couple that I was like, ah, that's scary. He threw an interception. He almost threw an interception in the end zone. And then another a ball that Connor and I talked about. But overall, I was very impressed with his touch. Like we knew about his arm strength. But the touch that he had on some of the short passes, the quick outs, like they were hitting guys in the face mask. I mean, even uh, Jonathan Brewer said in the post game or yesterday in a presser, Manny Diaz talked about him and Brewer being impressed with Malik Murphy's ability to hit his guys in the face mask. And you saw that. And so I think sky's the limit for Malik Murphy. Uh, I wish I would have saw a couple more connections on the deep ball, but I don't think it was his fault, to be honest. Duke was one for seven on deep balls. And I, two or three of them, I can think off the top of my head, JJ, had both hands on the ball. Yeah, 26 to 3, the final score in this one. Malik Murphy uh, is the only quarterback to be in the game uh, for the Blue Devils there and to have pass attempts sometimes in these games early and, and hopefully over these next few weeks against non conference competition. Maybe Duke gets the opportunity for younger quarterbacks uh, to get out there like Grayson Loftus and get some reps and that sort of thing. But anyway, Malik Murphy goes for this since 26 of 40, the official numbers there for you, 291 yards. 7.3 average on uh, yards per completion, two touchdowns, interception. The interception came all the way in the fourth quarter. So all in all, pretty good stuff from Malik Murphy. Uh, the touchdown pass to Eli Pankle late in the fourth quarter, for example, to your point, one of those where, I mean, he just absolutely zipped that football to Eli Pankle, who was ready for it. I mean, and, yeah. and that's going to be the thing we hear. I'll see some of these wide receivers, get your hands up. It's going to sting for a second, but you're going to make a big play once he gets the ball there. Yeah, absolutely. And shout out to uh, Eli Pankle coming back. He missed all of last year with a very tough injury uh, before the season started. And I think it's his first touchdown in like three years at Duke. So yeah. shout out to Eli Pankle having a great game and much well-deserved, much-deserved touchdown pass, touchdown catch that he had uh, against Elon. Without a doubt, Eli Pankle, seven catches, 81 yards, a 55-yard play early in the game before he got tackled inside the five. Look for a second, like maybe he's going to be able to break it loose and, and get into the end zone. And then Jordan Moore, what a dominant performance for Jomo. Seven catches, 112 yards, 47 yards was the longest play that he made. Uh, yet again, Jordan Moore kind of making some plays, and uh, he will definitely be a weapon for Malik Murphy this season. Yeah, I have a take, uh, JJ, that he'll have at least 85 catches this season, the first since Jameson Crowder. Uh, he looked like he was going to get it in the first half of Elon there for a little bit. I think he had four catches in the first, like, eight dropbacks. But seven catches, 112. He was the targeted 12 times. So I expect him to be targeted double-digit amount of times every game. Like, I think he'll have 10 or more targets every game. Whether he's double-teamed or single coverage, we don't know. But Jomo is very special, and I expect him to – have a big game at Northwestern. All right, and then if we're looking for some things to improve on for the Duke football team, I think everybody uh, would tell you they thought maybe you'd get a little bit more out of the run game for the Duke football team. Offensively, uh, the team had 27 carries for just 59 yards. That's 2.2 yards per carry. One touchdown, Jacquez Moore did get into the end zone. He scored the first touchdown of the season for the Blue Devils. Uh, but Star Thomas, 
had the longest rush of the game at just 12 yards for the Duke football team. So hopefully in the weeks to come, you can get a little bit more out of that uh, out of that run game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he had that 12-yard run. I think before that, Peyton Jones had a nine-yard run, and those were two longest runs. They were late in the fourth quarter on that yeah. touchdown drive to uh, Eli Pankle. And to your point, yes, the run game, it's just a collective unit that needs to improve. I'm not saying it's the O-line. I'm not saying it's the running backs. I'm just saying it's all involved right there. And to Duke's – to give Duke a little out here, Jonathan Brewer did say, like, the short passes, which we saw, is part of the run game as well. So – if you see teams load the box like Elon did, because Elon have eight, almost nine guys in the box on the rewatch, they throw the quick outs to Samir Hagens, and Samir Hagens will just take it on a third and six and get 12 yards for a first down and make you miss. So, like, there's ways around struggling run game, but hopefully we do see Duke with about, you know, 80 yards rushing against Northwestern with, like, four yards of carry would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see that. More productive production. Out of the run, because then you also talk about the offensive line, right? And and they obviously pay, uh, play a very, very big part uh, in what your team's able to do in that run game. Malik Murphy wasn't sacked a single time in this football game. So job well done on that front, but the offensive line. But we hear it all the time, run blocking, pass blocking, two different things, two different concepts. We do have a lot of new offensive linemen for the Duke football team. And so – while we'll have more games coming up and you want to see better performances from the running backs themselves uh, to kind of give them to play devil's advocate on their behalf a little bit, you want to see a little bit more from that offensive line and the run blocking department. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they uh, they were impressive with how fast they played uh, early in the game. And then through the fourth quarter, the announcers were like, yeah, like Elon's down to their second and third string front defensive front because Duke was just gashing them. And so – Maybe we will see the run game really develop for more second half performances uh, down the stretch of the season because they're going to gas the defense, hopefully, to yep. where Duke's ones are playing against other teams' twos due to depth. Yep, absolutely. All right, we've got uh, one more break to take here on the program. When we come back, the Blue Devils have yet another Friday night football game to tell you about coming up this week. Jordan Mann's here with us, and Lockdown Blue Devils will continue in a moment. Lockdown Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at 5-Hour Energy. Zero sugar and a convenient portable size. It's the perfect pick-me-up for getting stuff done. 5-Hour Energy has so many flavors like watermelon, tropical burst, grape, berry, and more than uh, for everyone. Try them all. 5-Hour Energy is the brand hardworking people like you have trusted for over 20 years to give them alert, energized feeling they need to get through a busy and hectic day. If you go to 5hourenergy.com, that is the number 5hourenergy.com, and get some 5-Hour Energy product today, you can use our promo code LOCKEDONCFB to receive 20% off your order. The order is only valid until September 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. The code is not good on subscription orders. Again, go to 5hourenergy.com today. 5-Hour Energy is a proud sponsor of Locked On Blue Devils. All right, let's keep going. Jordan Mann's here with us. Follow him on X at Jmans Takes at Big J and Little J Show on X as well. Duke one and zero, better than zero and one, and they get set for a game on Friday against Northwestern, taking the show on the road. Uh, what we're going to be invited to watch this game on Friday night. What do you think uh, is going to happen there, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, I will be in Chicago, so I will not be at the game. It will be a bachelor party, but. Uh... I'm excited for it. I'm excited to be in the same city as Duke. There you go. Yeah. Um, I, last year, I was on a bachelor party in San Diego. Duke also played Northwestern, and they won. So, hey, you know what? Maybe Duke <laughs> goes 2-0 and o when Jordan goes to bachelor parties. Against yes. Yes, that's what we want to see, man. This Northwestern team picks up a win themselves uh, in week one of the season, but not very impressive against Miami of Ohio. Uh, an FBS school, not FCS like Elon. Northwestern wins just 13 to 6. Uh, different, obviously, that Duke will be on the road this time. Northwestern is favored by two and a half, according to our friends over at FanDuel. Uh, so, should be a, a pretty tough and tightly contested football game, I'd say. Yeah, it's the 
second time since, or the last time Duke went to Northwestern uh, during week two was 2022, where Northwestern famously beat uh, Nebraska in Dublin and basically cost Scott Frost his job. <laughs> Everybody thought, hey, this Northwestern team is very sneaky. They were seven point favorites against Duke in week two. Duke obviously had the forced fumble at the goal line to win the game. Evan Hull fumbled thanks to Jalen Stinson and Darius Joyner. And then Northwestern proceeded to lose every single game after that and went 1-11 after winning in Ireland. So what I say to that is with the point spread, you just never know. Like I can see why Vegas has Northwestern as a two-and-a-half, three-point favorite. But at the end of the day, Duke's won five in a row against Northwestern. And Duke handled Northwestern last year, who ended up winning eight games last season. So – we're going to see this game. These games are always weird, JJ. Duke and Northwestern, like for the people that are outside looking in, these are some weird games that happen. Weird things happen. And I'm excited to watch all the weirdness Friday night. Yeah, Northwestern had 328 yards of offense in their win over Miami of Ohio. But again, the final score was just 13 to 6. Uh, and Miami of Ohio put up 267 yards uh, in their losing effort against the Wildcats. So, I think Duke should feel pretty good about their chances on the road here. Things you need to clean up uh, offensively, of course, in the run game and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, I'd love to see the defense kind of still playing like their hair's on fire and and, and putting up a, a strong performance because uh, I, I do feel like the defense that Duke will bring uh, may be on a, a different level than what we saw from Miami of Ohio against Northwestern this past weekend. Absolutely. And the one thing uh, for Northwestern, a little preview for you, your listeners for the Big J and Little J show is we talked about Northwestern's QB, Mike Wright. Mike Wright is the guy that played at Vanderbilt for a couple of years, went to Mississippi State. Now he's at Northwestern. Uh, he visited Duke this past offseason as a potential depth piece at the QB position, decided to go to Northwestern. But he leads the team in passing, obviously, but leads them in rushing. So where I'm going with that is Duke's aggressiveness is great, but when they get in the backfield, they really have to collapse that pocket for him because if he scoots free on a broken play, he could go because he is fast. But if Duke can wrap up like they proved against Elon, then Duke will be okay defensively. But it's those broken plays that Mike Wright lives for to where it looks like it's a sack and all of a sudden it's a 25-yard scramble by the yeah. court. Yeah, no doubt. All right, it's a, it's a Duke win. They're 1-0 and on the season, 26-3 in the win over Elon. They play Northwestern. Coming up on Friday, we've got smiles from Jordan Mann and his epic return to Locked On Blue Devils here today. Before you go, the Duke fans want to know, how did your pitch go to the Boozer Twins when they were also at the football game and in Durham over the weekend? How are we feeling about the chances that uh, Duke can get them? That uh, you put me on the spot there. I did not see <laughs> I was uh, in Duke football mode. Uh <laughs> But, you know, it seems like from what I saw on Twitter that with Duke, they had all the big dogs in town. So I'm sure that – Pretty Duke strategic. How about that? I mean, pro Devils weekend, so many guys in the league and former greats back in town for Labor Day weekend. I mean, you have to, awesome stuff. You have to understand, JJ, when I walk into Wallace Wade, I'm looking for a Connor Vernon or a Jameson Crowder. I could stumble <laughs> upon – uh, Jason Tatum, like, excuse me, sir. Do you have you seen Jameson Crowder anywhere? That's I get into football mode, so. right. but yeah, I saw uh, the visits that the Boozer twins had. I mean, McCain and Lively, everybody was back in town. So, look, Duke clearly brought the house. It, if you're college football 2025 guys, send the house, and that's what Duke did for the Boozer twins this past weekend. Yeah, that's what they got. I mean, everybody was there this past weekend for the Duke football team. Uh, or Duke basketball team, excuse me. We saw uh, R.J. Barrett back on campus for the first time in a long time. Really cool to see him back in the facility. And a lot of these guys got workouts uh, with the team and individually and just really good stuff for this current year's basketball team to kind of see ahead of the upcoming season, man. But, yeah, uh, we haven't had Duke basketball recruiting news in quite some time. I hope this means uh, we're trending in the right direction with the Boozer Twins, man. It, look, there's only one way to find out, and that's when they commit. Because at the end of the day, we never know until that no. second that yep. it comes out of their mouth. We saw that with uh, Bryce Davis, who yep. committed to Duke, that everything was leaning Duke for his announcement. He chose Clemson. And then a month later, a month and a half later, he chooses Duke. So you never know until they open their mouths with a the microphone, and then you're like, okay, that's where he's going temporarily. 
Yeah, shame on us. We got to get John Shire on the phone and make sure you're a part of the pitch to these yeah. big-time recruits that uh, come to visit, too. I don't know if they want my pitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jordan, it's so good to see you as always. Give one final plug for your show and, and just all the ways that people can kind of support you. Yeah, the Big J and Little J shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, YouTube is Jman underscore where you can find the Big J and Little J show and film breakdowns. I might be having a Malik Murphy film breakdown coming out before I head to Chicago Thursday, so be looking out for that. But we'll see, JJ, and I appreciate you having me on as always. Absolutely, Jordan. We'll do it again soon. Thanks, man. See you, buddy. That's Jordan Mann joining us here on today's show of Lockdown Blue Devils. Really good stuff. Big win for the football team, and yeah, hopefully a lot was done in regards to recruiting the Boozer Twins over the weekend. As always, let's go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you, and good day. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.